In Sunday's French Grand Prix at Le Mans, Benaya faced off against Jorge Martin, his Pramac opponent, and Marc Marquez of Grassini Ducati for first place. In the end, Martin prevailed in this struggle to win his second Grand Prix of the year and increase his lead in the championship to 38 points over Benaya. After leading the last 27 laps, Benaya was forced to drop to third by Marquez, who is currently third in the standings and 40 points behind Martin after five rounds. The two-time world champion thinks he, Martin, and Benaya were the most consistent riders on the grid in 2024 and thinks Le Mans will serve as a sneak peek into the season's championship match. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. We three are the most complete riders in the championship right now, in my opinion, he declared. Some riders possess sufficient speed to excel in competitions and secure victories. But we are the most complete riders in terms of speed and consistency. Jorge more so in my opinion, and if Jorge hadn't crashed at Jerez, the Spanish GP top three would have been the same, the same men competing, I believe. So I believe that this is roughly how it will be for the championship. On the 21st tour, Benaya started from the pole position and led Martin for the first 20 circuits until Martin made a move at turn three. The factory Ducati rider claims that in order for him to have a chance of winning, he suffered too much in sector three, especially turn nine, when Marquez passed him on the final lap. Although Benaya called the bike problem dangerous at the time, he was unable to complete the sprint on Saturday, and he now admits that winning the Grand Prix was his top priority. After five races, Martin's lead in the championship has grown to 38 points after winning the French Grand Prix in an incredible battle between himself and fellow Ducati riders Marc Marquez and Francesco Benaya. Now that Jorge Martin has won seven times in the MotoGP, race triumphs may not seem all that noteworthy. However, Sunday's French Grand Prix victory may be the Pramac rider's most significant to date as he works to build his resume for a factory ride next season. This is all due to the manner in which he accomplished it. Since his very first MotoGP race back in 2021, Martin has been fast. In fact, some have even suggested that he is too fast, depending too much on his natural ability and aggression to go up the grid while occasionally forgoing patience and strategy. Naturally, that works out well for him in the sprint races. Martin has won 10 of the previous 12. But even 24 hours later, there is sometimes something lacking from the major event. Naturally, Martin has improved a little bit this season. And he didn't compete for a title until the season's penultimate race against Peko Benaya the previous year without learning more than a few things from a double champion who is frequently regarded as the opposite of a jockey who always considers the broad picture and when to play his cards. Martin has gradually changed his mentality, but he still has some difficult spots. For example, two weeks ago at the Spanish Grand Prix, he lost a significant advantage by crashing out of the lead, which allowed Benaya to cut into his lead in the championship. Because he made the proper move twice during the 27-lap race at Le Mans, it was crucial to demonstrate on Sunday that he is still progressing at the appropriate rate to win a MotoGP World Championship in the future. The first of those choices occurred early in the race when he realized that it was better to be immediately behind Benaya than in front of him, as he had done the last time out at Jerez. By allowing the Italian set the pace, he could simply close the gap with the group behind. That's a really daring move, considering how adept Benaya is at controlling races from the lead while maintaining tire pressure and how incredibly difficult it is to pass him. Benaya has solidified a reputation as one of MotoGP's best defensive riders. In the last portion of the race, Martin demonstrated why he felt so at ease. Once a hard charging nevertheless, Marc Marquez managed to get by Fabio Di Gianantonio and began to shut down the leading pair by forcing his title challenger, Benaya, into a strong move in the Dunlop chicane. At the second attempt, it must be noted. When questioned about the last laps of the Le Mans by the race during the press conference, Martin responded, I knew that Mark was behind. Okay, I'm pretty comfortable here behind Peko, I told myself, as I noticed Digio was being dropped. Mark was behind by more than two seconds. However, he gained a second place in nearly a single lap, and I realized that I needed to accelerate and press forward to avoid falling to third place, if not worse. I tried to move as quickly as I could to try and set my pace to make a small gap because I knew he was coming. Moreover, he made that work. With just a few corners remaining, 
Benaya, rather than Martin, was the one who Marquez was compelled to make an audacious late move on to steal second. His overtaking and subsequent defense secured this outcome. There was more to the victory this weekend than just the 25 points, and it's encouraging for Martin's chances of winning a factory promotion in 2025, as well as his second consecutive title run. Marc Marquez rode brilliantly once again, going from P13 to second place in the second MotoGP race at Le Mans. Marquez finished the first lap in eighth place, although not moving up as many spots as he did in the sprint. After eliminating the riders in front of him one by one, Marquez joined Jorge Martin and Francesco Benaya in the race for the win. Marquez made a bold effort to steal second from Benaya in the last lap, but his hunt for his first Ducati victory went on. We cooked that podium a little slower today, Marquez remarked. It's true that I finished second in the sprint race yesterday thanks to our incredible start, but as I already stated, what mattered most was that I had the speed to recover. I was trying to gradually catch up to the other riders because I knew the pace would be high. We lost some time with Digia in the third place battle, but I decided that third place was good enough. But the pace was there, and I was catching up to them. I chose to tackle Peko since I anticipated him to attack Martin in the final few laps. After gaining less positions than in the sprint, Marquez discussed his start and his approach to the race. Today was a good start and I recovered some positions, Marquez continued. But in turns one, two, and three, I couldn't find the right line. On that fast corner, I missed the mark. I then added, okay, try to come back step by step. After that, I could see that they had excellent acceleration coming out of turn eight, even though I was trailing Bastianini. I was losing a little bit more there. It was similar in the main straight, but I was losing a little bit more in turns seven and eight. However, there were other areas where I excelled, like the left corners or the places where I passed Peko. I hadn't tested the bike yet, so perhaps my bike was superior there, but at that moment, I felt incredibly strong. Despite his outstanding comeback efforts, Marquez came to the conclusion that such low-scoring results are unsustainable. The former Repsol Honda racer commented, That 13th place penalized our race a lot, but we were able to save this time. The following time, it will be more challenging because you can only save once or twice a year. However, on Friday of this past weekend, we made a decision and went in a bad way. Then, on Saturday, it was already too late when we returned. Then, altering the configuration of the circuitry. I felt comfortable on the bike for the first time during the sprint race. These two guys are really quick to get things done and have very good ideas about what they want. Undoubtedly, Marquez demonstrated why Ducati is considering elevating him to the factory team. However, the eight-time world champion faces a challenge as Jorge Martin defeated him in both Le Mans races. The move by Ducati is probably going to give other riders a starting point for talks about their futures. If Martin, who has been the most reliable and fastest rider in 2024, is awarded that seat, then Marquez might be one of them. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.